email from this record label called Fearless Records, and they were like, hey, do you want to promote um, our new Punko's Pop album? And I'm like, um, yeah, I guess so. Like, what do, you, what do you want me to do? For a record label to ask me to do something like that, I was like, okay, well, I mean, like, are you guys going to give me permission to use this song? And they're like, yeah, totally, which was another thing that was completely unheard of. So I came up with this really awesome idea. I'm like, what if we do a music video contest for Punk Goes Pop 2? And I'll have my friend Zach uh, host the contest on his channel as well. And it'll be Binks vs. Burry. And his subscribers will make music videos. And then my subscribers will make music videos. And um, we'll choose the best out of those two groups. And they'll go head to head. And um, you guys can decide who wins. They're like, yeah, that'd be a great idea. We ended up winning, by the way. In the same way that Vlog Candy encouraged me to try new things and challenge my editing skills, every time I ever did a music video contest, I feel like I did the same thing for um, a lot of other people who maybe wanted to start a YouTube channel but didn't have a reason. There's people that I've met in person, they're like, my first video ever was like to your music video contest. I met Megan through YouTube. I used to make music videos and uh, so did she. I used to watch her videos all the time and I like, she was someone that I looked up to a lot and uh, like her music videos definitely inspired me in some of my music videos. My process for making music videos was kind of insane. So we picked out a song that we liked and we listened to it over and over and over and over again. By that point, I would know every single lyric of that song, and I would hate it. So every music video that we ever did, I hated the song by the end of it. Not good. My brother David, he was the backup dancer, and he'd help me come up with ideas for my music videos, but when it came to him holding a camera, or editing, or anything like that, he kind of just... He just didn't want to do it. It seemed too complicated for him. When my sister started bringing me in the music videos, I learned that I actually liked being in front of the camera and not behind it. So that includes not editing, not holding it. I didn't like doing that at all. It was like little red hen. There was this girl named Annie, and I, I actually mentored her. She went to the church, and um, she was just kind of my little sidekick. Megan was very cool. And I think that that is why I gravitated towards her. She was this 19 year old skateboarder. Um, she was a girl, she always listened to Avril Lavigne, and she was just on it. Slowly but surely, Annie would come with me on music video shoots and she'd help me set up shots. And then uh, she'd start having her own idea for the way she wanted shots to look. And um, she'd watch me edit and put things together. And it was, it was a really cool, it was a real, really cool bonding moment. Annie was basically Megan's first assistant. She helped out with filming, editing, anything my sister basically needed. She was the first person that took interest in what Megan was doing. I loved it, I loved her, and I loved spending time with her. Being mentored by her um, with media-wise, still one of my passions. She taught me a lot in both spiritual and everything. You know, she, when you tell her a goal and when you tell her what you want to do, She'll just, all right, let's do it right now. And that's it. One day I was searching on MySpace for new music to make music videos to, and I came across, uh, I came across Al City. His music was so good. It was our first time ever hearing Autotune, and we loved it. And it kind of made a summer. I messaged him on MySpace, hoping I'd get a response. He had a lot of uh, fans, so I didn't think it was actually anything good would come of it. And um, his manager actually got back to me. I had asked him, like, can I do a music video for you guys? I'd really love to promote your, your stuff. I think it's amazing. And the manager's like, you know what? Actually, hold off, because we're coming out with an album, and um, we'd really love you to help us promote it. The first song I promoted for All City was um, Fireflies. It was around the same time the album dropped, and I uh, added the song into this merch contest uh, video that I made. It was the first time I ever had made merch and then a month later I wanted to make like a really cool music video what I really like doing with music videos is I loved speeding up the song like 15 to 20 percent nothing too drastic but when you did that um, your if you lip dubbed some of the words incorrectly it kind of covered it up I didn't know that was the reason why my sister sped up the songs. I thought it was because she just liked the way it sounded. So when choosing to speed up a song, you kind of have to use something that's a little bit slower because if it's already pretty fast paced, it's going to sound super chipmunky. And Vanilla Twilight was the slowest song on the Ocean Eyes album. The idea of Vanilla Twilight was very cheesy and I knew it from the beginning. 
Megan loved the whole lip singing in the front and David dancing in the back. And that's always been their thing. I didn't think any of that through. I'm just like, let's just go somewhere pretty and let's film an awesome music video. It was so hot that day and me and Megan both felt really bad for Annie because Annie had to be the person to record it and follow us around the whole entire time. We had a jacked up boom box. We had to go buy a like, battery so we could have a wireless radio because we didn't have the cool wireless Bluetooth stereos now, we, now that we have. There was no story to Vanilla Twilight. It was just my brother and I trying to be really freaking cool. But for some reason, I think he really felt like he was looking good that day. So he was like trying to lip dub with me. And usually he doesn't do that because it just looks weird if we're both lip dubbing towards the camera. That day, I thought it looked really good and I was really feeling the music. And I guess that translated into me being a creeper. <laughs> Since Owl City was blowing up and starting to hit radio, um, we really played a cool part in that. And I, I don't think it's something that's ever really talked about too much, but a lot of people found Owl City's music through my YouTube channel. The charts at the time, Fireflies was number one because it was his first single, but his second most sold song without any promotion was Vanilla Twilight. Still to this day, people recognize us for the music video we did for Vanilla Twilight. How cool is that? The aftermath of it was insane, and I was not expecting a video that I filmed, and that sucked, probably. I say that I suck at filming so greatly. Got four million views because all these little kids loved watching it over and over. I was pretty stoked to be a part of that. After that, it felt like the floodgates opened. I did music videos for Forever the Sickest Kids, A Rocket to the Moon, Lily Broussard, Brianne Duran, who um, plays piano for Owl City. Another really cool band I got to promote was He Is We, before they had um, been signed to Universal. I remember I did a music video for Happily Ever After, and uh, I did that with Annie. We were just filming out in the park in the rain. It was such a hot mess, but we did it and it was awesome. And um, their, their sales just like went through the roof. And like the people over at Universal was like, what the heck, what's happening? Like we wanted to keep this band under wraps. We wanted to recreate their sound. Like why are they selling all these songs? And they found out that it was because of my music video. There was a need for what I was doing. And um, a&R people were hitting up, they were blowing up my email, sending me demos, and they, they saw the power of, of, what I, of what I had done with Owl City, and the power of what I was doing with He Is We, that it just, it just seemed like, why not? And it was just, it was so cool to be a part of that. I remember YouTubers would ask me, like, how did you get permission to do that? And I'm like, well, I'm working directly with the labels. So with getting all these opportunities to do music videos for bands, um, there are three that I passed on. And, uh, oh, I beat myself up about it, like, every single day. The first one I passed on, it was Neon Trees. And I swear to you, a couple months later, it blew up. It was all over the radio. And I'm like, no, I could have been a part of that. The next one was, um, these happened kind of around the same time, um, fun, which I was talking to them and I was actually gonna do promotion for them, but I just never got around to making the music video. And the last one was of Monsters and Men. I heard about them before um, they had hit radio or caught any momentum. And I, I love their song, uh, Little Talks. It was so eerie and so cool. I knew when I first heard it, I'm like, this is gonna go to radio. But I, I, didn't, I didn't make the music video in enough time, so. Ah, my life, why? I loved music with every ounce of who I was. I loved the way it connected people. I, I loved the way that it would stir up these emotions inside of me that I couldn't get from watching a movie. It spoke to my soul and, and music, I've always connected so strongly to music. So to be the music video girl, that was something I took pride in. When companies like Bebo came in, music artists knew that they could just put themselves on it and be as successful as we were. I had become irrelevant and there was, there was no longer a place for um, for Strawberry17, the music girl on YouTube. I met Freddie Wong at uh, Project for Awesome and it, he was so cool. I remember we went back to his place and we were talking about video games with a whole bunch of people and I was telling him how obsessed I was with World of Warcraft and he's like, dude, you should meet my brother. He loves World of Warcraft. You guys would get along great. And I'm like, what's your brother's name? And he's like, his name is Jimmy. 